Okay, I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for for showing up tonight. Um, I know everybody's probably very busy these days and has a lot going on. So I appreciate you all um, taking the time out to to educate yourself and to to start thinking um, forward a little bit about um, how you can improve your business situation um, given the current situation. So. With that, we will get started. So um, just first a little house cleaning, um, quick disclaimer. This session is very much talking about future thinking and going forward. And as we all know right now, um, the future is very difficult to predict. So um, I'm not gonna try and give you any concrete answers uh, during this session. Um, I'll do my best to, to answer your questions and give advice. But the goal here really is to help you start um, finding an approach for um, thinking about the future and and how you're going to navigate uh, the next several months, if not a couple of years. Um, obviously, SCORE is a volunteer, um, volunteer organization, and um, we give advice, uh, but that is to be taken just as advice, and uh, we encourage you to talk to um, legal accounting, tax experts, um, your bank for, for anything um, more serious. So this is me. Um, who am I? Uh, go Tigers. My name's Jen Dubois. Um, I'm from Louisiana originally. And I put that in here to remind myself to let you know that um, I have a little experience with disaster recovery um, and business disaster recovery I'm from New Orleans. And uh, I watched a lot of friends and family go through their businesses and their livelihood um, after Hurricane Katrina. Um, they're currently being impacted again by COVID-19. And so I have a real um, sensitivity to what some of you might be going through um, right now. And um, I can tell you, I've seen friends and family rebuild their businesses, um, completely reinvent themselves, and they're doing fine 10 years later. So there is hope. Um, as far as, as me, uh, I have quite a varied background. I uh, started out uh, with an MBA. I worked in corporate banking and management consulting um, over in Europe mostly. I've spent several years living and working in Europe, a couple of languages. Um, and last summer, uh, after living in Switzerland for four or five years, I moved back to Barbara. And, uh, I currently work as a freelance consultant with my own business, um, working with startups and entrepreneurs uh, pretty much around the globe and around the country, um, none of which are in Santa Barbara at this time. Um, so I really enjoy being part of SCORE and getting to connect with some of the local uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, and as I've indicated at the bottom, I, I absolutely love uh, getting to know uh, small business owners and, and entrepreneurs and, and helping them solve whatever problems they have. Okay, so uh, real quick, I just wanted to set the spirit of the, of the, uh, the discussion. Um, I have a few uh, cliches here, but um, they're, they're cliches for a reason. They're important, and um, this is kind of the spirit that I've uh, created this presentation for you. Um, in terms of what I'd like you to get out of it. So um, hope is not a strategy. I think we're all um, hoping for a lot of change and good news um, right now and kind of in a wait and see mode. And um, this is about thinking about how you control the situation and use that to spur you into some kind of action going forward that's gonna help your business. So hopefully you'll come away with a few ideas for what you can do um, to start taking control of, of the current situation. Um, never waste a good crisis. I'm sure you've all heard that before, little Winston Churchill. And, um, but it, it, it holds true even in a crisis like, like this. Um, you can always be looking for opportunities and answer for your business in the midst of a crisis. Um, and then finally, feel the fear and do it anyway is one of my favorite mantras. Um, you know, we're all kind of fearful right now for a lot of different reasons. And certainly if you've seen your revenue drop dramatically and you've had to let your employees go, um, that's a pretty fearful situation. But just have to start putting one foot forward 
and embrace it and um, take action. So the agenda for today uh, really is, is about helping you to think about the way forward. Um, people have different ways of thinking about planning and um, organizing their business. So I put together three different approaches. They do overlap in terms of um, how you might think about um, uh, the future of your business. And um, I tried to simplify it by, uh, by, by providing, you know, some easy to remember uh, titles, you know, nine parts of your business model, um, which we'll look at next, uh, three R's to create a roadmap to and um, the concept of business continuity planning, which I see um, at least one person in the audience has, is familiar with. Okay, so reassessing your business model. Why is that important right now? Um, right now, uh, it's all about forecasting and getting a handle on what the, the future might hold. Um, if you've put in loan applications, you probably had to go through this process already. And um, that forecast may have been done uh, based on historical assumptions. It may have been done in haste. And um, it's probably not the last forecasting you'll doing or need to do uh, for the next several months, if not uh, several years, in light of the uncertainty around the impact of COVID-19. Um, forecast is extremely useful if done correctly, uh, in terms of get, helping you to get a handle on um, what's driving your business and uh, what sort of financial targets and business priorities you should set. Um, the best uh, way to go about this is really to do a holistic uh, review of your business, and that's what we're going to go over in a minute, how to do that. Um, if you are looking for more tools and information on how to go about forecasting, we do have an excellent webinar on the SCORE website already that takes you through the steps of forecasting, and there'll be future webinars on that topic as well. So in light of that, um, let's look at some local economic indicators uh, that I think everyone should be aware of right now. Um, this is pretty real-time data. It comes from a recent um, presentation that was done by the UC Economic Impact Project. And as you can see, um, it, it's not looking very good right now. Uh, real estate is down. Loans are down for real estate. The, the, the job loss estimates are pretty, pretty steep. Um, foot traffic is obviously down. And um, for our friend in the audience who's in leisure and hospitality, I'm sure they can relate to the hit that that industry has taken locally. Um, some statistics from Visit Santa Barbara, uh, the words that they used is where tourism is likely to be decimated this year. And um, if you look at how millions of visitors and jobs rely on tourism, um, the impact, the, the magnitude of impact that they're predicting, um, the drop in tourism this month, 81% air travel down, obviously. Um, they believe it will take several years for Santa Barbara tourism to have a full recovery. Um, on top of that, there's the uncertainty about the reopening of the economy, as you know, and the governor has said that um, we need to have a downward trajectory for 14 to start reopening. Um, so that's the reality uh, when you when you forward and you you start thinking about your business and forecasting the future. That's the situation at hand right now. And it's important to to um, to follow that and to track that. Um, on the right, I just pulled a, a really about um, how people emotionally recover from a disaster, and you also have to consider even if the economy reopens that um, you your suppliers. Are going to go through a process of an emotional process of of getting back to normal and it kind of looks like this graph where there might be an uptick for a while and then um, there might be some lows until a new normal is established another just real-time example from the restaurant industry here um, acme uh, which owns The Lark and um, Lucky Penny and a few other restaurants down, um, gave a presentation. Um, they are not in business as far as I could understand. They have 345 employees furloughed. 
had some difficulty getting PPP. Uh, you know, not good. There's uh, 940 restaurants in Santa Barbara, 9% uh, of the local employment, 103 million in worker wages gone right now. And um, that figure, $50 per visitor per day spent on restaurants alone, you multiply that times 7 million, 8 million visitors a year, that starts to be a big impact. So that's, that's kind of the scenario we face right now. And um, I just gather some other information and data sources um, that might be of interest to you to help with your forecasting, um, reliable sources, and and just for, for fun, I put together other finance sources besides the, the current PPP and EIDL loans that you might want to, and you can refer to those later um, if you, you come back to the uh, website and, and download these slides. So just one last um, example of why you, you really start taking a hard look at your business model in depth. Uh, after the 2008 recession, um, on the left, there's a chart about births and deaths. If you see the gap, uh, the decline in births and the rise in deaths during that two-year two period, um, you know, it's significant if you're in a business related to children or childbirth um, or toddlers. Uh, and if your business was related to death, you, you did well, sadly. Um, but that, that is kind of the thinking you have to take in, in this crisis is, is you know, what are the things that I need to try to impact my business over the next few years? On the right, you have, um, after the, the recession, the last recession, uh, what happened to, with banks and, and in the years following. And even though banks and the government are giving out EIDL loans in theory right now, um, there still could be a knock-on effect one, two, three years later uh, in terms of credit availability. So with that, um, it's, it's time to take a good look at all the different parts of your business and really start to think about and question uh, what is going to happen um, and, what, and how those are going to be impacted and, and what you can do uh, in the future to, to, you know, to, to continue in business. Um, so just ignore the questions, uh, the fine print on this uh, template right now. This template is called the business model can, and this is what a business model is, is simply make money. You, you have products and services that you offer, people pay for them, and you have costs associated with providing those services, and the net net is your profit. So these are, think of these as the drivers of your revenue and your costs in your business. And um, it's essentially a one page business plan. So one way of, of, of looking at how you should approach the future in your business is to go through each of these parts of your business and really examine what's gone and what you are forecast to to happen um, with each of, and what your options are with each of these levers of your business. So as an example, um, this is, these are the four uh, parts of your business that are customer facing, that people, that have to do with what people will pay for your products and services. And um, I just really brainstormed this list myself and was surprised at how many different aspects of, of, of a business might be affected with this crisis. So um, it's a bit, a bit wordy in your eyes, uh, but if we just look, for example, at customer relationships, if you think about that, um, I was thinking about it today, um, I haven't really heard from any local businesses directly. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's interesting to me, um, it, that, that there isn't a whole lot of at least for me, um, customer relationship management. Uh, no email marketing from from the donut shop, or uh, you know, I get I get contact from NAC chains, um, but locally no. So you really have to think about how you're going to keep your customers engaged. Um, people's habits are changing. You know, Instacart uh, subscription, the elderly population have skyrocketed. You know, elderly people don't normally, um, but now they are. So you have to consider uh, the changing habits and, and 
customer, the habits that they're developing um, during this crisis and how that might impact your business. You know, the hoarding, for example, um, their emotional state. Uh, a lot of people are losing jobs. You know, how can you reach out to them? How can you help them out? How can you um, keep them engaged with your, your business and lift their spirits? Um, uh, you know, I'm shopping a lot on walmart.com instead of amazon.com. And, uh, you know, that's a change in behavior. If, if consumers, if your customers are starting to look for cheaper options in terms of the, the products and services you provide, that's something to think about. So I've highlighted just a, a few, you know, a few of the most obvious um, aspects of, of your business that I think about. Um, in terms of reaching your customers, uh, we have an excellent webinar on email marketing and the importance of, of that during this time period. So now's the time to get on that if you're, you're not really uh, um, adept at, at email marketing. Um, consumer, your customers are getting hit with a lot of emails and a lot of information, a lot of noise right now. And um, it's important to consider that and to be tactful in terms of how you reach out to them and how you're trying to promote your products and services. Um, things like, you know, scheduling apps, you know, putting a scheduling app on your website um, rather than people having to call or, or do things differently can, can add value to customers right now. Um, and again, the value proposition is probably going to change dramatically for some businesses. Uh, Santa Barbara is blessed to be a, a fairly a fairly wealthy place and um, we have a great lifestyle here and but but people are are going to be losing their jobs and they're going to become more price conscious they're going to start saving more and um, that obviously is going to impact willingness to go out and eat to engage in in extra activities and things of that nature to, to join a gym to go get a, a, a haircut, uh, to have a fancy meal, and so forth. Um, so you really need to, to think about um, when you're building in your, your forecast for your future business, um, how you might have to tweak uh, your offer. Um, on the, the cost side of your business, uh, the operational side of your business, um, these are kind of the 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 big categories that you'll want to take a look at and really think. Obviously, uh, right now supply chain is an issue for a lot of businesses, um, certainly for the grocery stores. And um, I read somewhere that uh, you know we might have only about two weeks of meat protein available um, for, for a while. So um, those are the kinds of, of, of issues you'll you'll want to, to keep track of and, 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 and track your sourcing, potentially looking for uh, new suppliers and alternatives. Um, automation is a big thing uh, with, with COVID, certainly in the manufacturing sector. Um, less reliance on people and, and cutting is probably gonna be a priority for a lot of businesses. So you'll wanna think about how you can automate uh, to 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 uh, insulate a bit from uh, the need for labor um, contracts obviously uh, can be renegotiated you certainly want to be thinking about um, you know setting yourself up for renegotiating contracts whether it's payment terms or um, the price you pay uh, and and be collecting information data on your uh, key partners um, in terms of activities and operations, that's your your day to day. Uh, some obvious things are the changes in your workforce model. People are working from home. You might be switching to more of a freelance model, uh, a temporary worker model, a part time worker model. Um, but that's going to have an impact on on your how you operate. Uh, obviously, you'll need to be monitoring your employee health and putting in protective measures for quite some time. And uh, that might require, for example, more oversight and management to, to, to manage that whole process. That's going to thing as well. Um, you know, everyone is at home on their computers, so you're definitely going to want to update your website, make sure that it's got the bells and whistles and has all the information 
uh, your customers potentially need. Um, other uh, things to consider are your marketing activities. Again, going back to email marketing and, and keeping your customers engaged. Um, and obviously the operating hours for a lot of businesses are, are dramatically shortened. Um, but you might see a shift uh, in the fall when things pick up again and perhaps your operating hours uh, will pick up and you'll have to extend them. Um, in terms of resources that you need to look at, obviously our human resources, your employees are the, the most pressing issue right now. Um, there's talk of, of employees asking to be let go so they can collect unemployment because it pays more than staying on. Issues like that are, are very hard to, to try and anticipate and work through. Um, funding is, is obviously top of mind for everyone. I would encourage you to uh, go beyond um, the, the EIDL program and the PPP and uh, really try to think about um, how you can potentially uh, locate other funding. I've, I've put some resources in the previous slides and I encourage you to take a look at those and start thinking about that. Um, scheduling and communication tools with your with with your your employees with your 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 customers you're gonna have to stockpile mask gloves sanitizer um, other things that that people covet like TP um, and uh, you, you might consider uh, what you're doing in terms of uh, customer relationship management or real system and you know if you don't have one you might want to look at at Incorporating one into your business, uh, again, to automate and, and reduce costs potentially or um, as an avenue to increase sales and build more relationships with customers. And cost structure is obviously extremely important. You've probably already uh, taken a hard look at your costs and, 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 and made some significant changes there. I would encourage you to think about how sustainable those reductions are. Um, what you can do to either sustain them or, um, you know, how you're going to work work out the, the cost reductions that you've made uh, coming out of the crisis and as things pick up. The cost of sales uh, is another thing to take a real hard look at if you've been giving discounts or if you need to give discounts, um, you know, can you uh, move to an e-commerce model that is uh, less costly? And uh, you know, if you're a food service business, you're obviously going to want to be using um, some of these apps like DoorDash, and, and that does come with a cost. So um, the important thing to think about is is what are the the operational and cost levers that you need to really focus on to build in some resiliency uh, over the next you know year, two years, um, and not just temporarily. So real quick, this is a very busy slide. I'm not going to go through it. I, I mainly put it in here for people to use as a reference later on, but this is just an example of you might go through um, along the lines of your business model. Um, and I have three examples here, potential businesses, retail, hotel, uh, wholesale, and distributor. And if we just take the hotel, since I know someone in the audience is hospitality, um, Obviously, uh, hotels are hard hit. Uh, the, the anticipation is that people will be road tripping uh, this summer. Uh, I think there's a lot of pent up demand uh, with people wanting to get out and do something. So, you know, I, clearly you're gonna wanna focus on, on, um, on the road trippers uh, going into the winter even. Uh, another option might be essential workers, uh, people who are uh, working in healthcare who don't wanna go home and and, uh, and contaminate their family. They need a place to stay perhaps, you know, maybe there's something there. Uh, travel writers, you know, they're, they're still um, traveling around writing about hotels and, and you know, perhaps that's, that's a, an audience that you can, you can focus more on. And, and single people, you know, who are, who are uh, more likely and more free to, to move about. And I'm not saying that this happens right now, but, you know, just thinking about new customer segments and not just assuming that your traditional customers are gonna walk through the door when the economy opens again. Um, you might have to get creative. Um, in terms of customer relationships, again, um, phone calls, personal emails. If you do have other customers, out to them, send emails, send a special offer for the fall, whatever it is, 
um, but keep them engaged because they're very distracted right now and um, and stressed. So you can you can support them during that time um, and keep them uh, engaged. When things do open up, uh, they remember you. Um, again, channels. Uh, you know, even down to to uh, handing out flyers uh, and and doing mail old fashioned mail drops. You know, hey, d you know, here's an offer for the future. Uh, don't forget us. That sort of thing. Um, you know, you should be thinking about doing. Uh, and in terms of uh, for hotels, things like keyless entry and con contact free check ins um, might become very important. You know, maybe start looking into those kinds of technologies. Uh, Obviously sanitation, and we'll get to that a little later, but what is sanitation in a hotel room? Uh, you know, you, you need to be very clear to your potential customers what that is. Uh, I, I see lots of different versions of sanitation in businesses right now. Um, and obviously price, people are getting hit in the wallet. So you need to be thinking about and doing some, some scenarios in terms of if you, you do need to provide discounts and investments and new types of packages to entice people to get in the car and drive to your hotel. Business partners, um, I'm sure you know Visit Santa Barbara, other tourism related businesses, you might wanna reach out to them and see how they're doing, what kind of ideas they have, might be some potential partnership, get creative. Um, activities in terms of your operations, you may need to actually hire people, um, hire a marketer um, or a web developer to improve your, your, your marketing and, and website interaction. Um, and again, for resources, uh, you're obviously gonna wanna be following um, tourism industry reports, maybe doing some pre-sales, and, uh, and obviously you'll be furloughing staff, your, your key staff, um, and hopefully be able to keep them on and bring them back in um, in the future. So I, I would like to ask, has anybody um, started started thinking about the long-term impact and, and doing forecasting and, and scenario planning? Okay, so our friend in the hospitality industry says that um, she is following webinars to begin and st to start forecasting. And I think that's absolutely spot on. I think we're just at the um, brink of, of being able to start realizing kind of an accept the situation that I described um, earlier on and, and, and thinking about what that means for the future. Okay, so one question, you know, what will the customer dynamic look like um, in the future? And, and uh, you know, that's a question. Uh, it's gonna look differently for, for every type of business. And again, I think by maintaining your um, relationships with your customers now, um, you have to get a feel for what your, how your customers are gonna react uh, when business does open up again. And uh, you know, that, that's, that, that's gonna drive everything, consumer confidence, customer confidence uh, in, in the, the new world, the post COVID world is absolutely what's going to drive everything. So you really wanna spend some time uh, on the customer end of your business model, uh, thinking about you know, everything that's gonna change uh, with respect to your customers. Okay, another question that I have is um, that someone is a startup that was just starting to build their customer reputation um, when this hit and, and what advice do I have? Well, carry on. Um, if you're able to carry on uh, building your business and your reputation, certainly I'm working with some uh, businesses who are um, in startup mode and they're still plowing through it and they are making it happen. Um, and, and I would say, uh, just like any business, as, as long as you, uh, you're in business and you can keep going, uh, carry on with your strategy, but again, you have to look at your business model and what your assumptions were uh, when you started the business and consider how that will change because it will. Um, so uh, if you were starting to offer you know, whatever product and service, um, you, 
you you have to think about how you can do that now in 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 light of the current situation. Another comment is um, someone's working on a, a website. They're closed right now and trying to find products to sell in the small shop. Uh, well, that is uh, a great example of, of you know, refocusing your efforts uh, to, to, you know, to keep, to keep in business and to keep engaged. Um, so yes, definitely uh, focusing on your website and, and the virtual uh, side of your business, building a virtual presence and engaging in digital marketing, all of those things are, are very uh, necessary right now. In terms of you know products to sell in your shop, um, you know that you you can sell through your website, but I would also consider uh, and and I'm not sure if if in your particular situation this makes sense, but you know you do have websites, obviously Amazon, um, Etsy, uh, and and uh, uh, other platforms that you can use to sell products that will really help you get your product out there digitally. Okay, and, and just one last comment before we move on. Um, one of the panelists says that they've started to set up their e-commerce site to sell things online. And that's that's absolutely um, the kind of thinking that, sh that you should be doing right now. Um, you know, just shifting your business model and thinking about what you can do uh, and, you know, potentially grow. Uh, obviously, e-commerce is booming and it's relevant for just about any business. So. Um, it's, it may not be something you do temporarily. It may be something that you you end up investing in quite a bit of time and, and effort uh, to build out that side of your business. In addition to looking at your business model, as we previously discussed, uh, it, there's an order to things uh, in terms of uh, forecasting and thinking about the future. So I've kind of divided it up into three phases. Uh, right size, reposition, and redesign. And it's another way of looking at the future and kind of how you can divide up your time and priorities over the next few months. Um, so right size, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Uh, this is the mode that everyone's in right now, which is to um, you know, look at the next three months, survive, cut costs, tighten up cash flow, apply for loans and financing, um, you know, get your systems in order, in order to be able to do that. And um, again, tracking information and start kind of building up your database that will help you uh, move forward. Again, there's a lot of great webinars on right sizing and taking immediate steps for your business uh, on the SCORE website that you can go watch, uh, talking about cash flow and financial management. Um, and I encourage you that uh, there'll be another webinar um, on May 4th about how to best use the corona-related uh, aid if you, in fact, get that. So right-sizing is where uh, everyone is right now. And as our, our um, participant from the hospitality industry said, she's starting to think about the next uh, step, which is what I call repositioning. And um, this is really, uh, you know, many businesses have already started to engage in this. You, you know, obviously, restaurants are delivering. Um, but I think what it's important to understand is that you, you might need to reposition your products and services uh, more permanently. Um, McKinsey came out a couple days ago uh, with a, a report on, on, on retailers and their forecast, and they basically were saying, you know, you need to redesign the whole retail model um, and don't expect consumers to walk in the door and start buying um, when the door is open. So, you know, that's pretty, pretty sobering advice. Um, so what you want to do, like some of you are doing now, is, is really uh, create a space um, apart from applying for the loans and, and worrying about cash flow, you know, whether it's a person or a team or just time you set aside uh, from, that's separate from crisis management and start planning for how you can reposition your business, um, like pivoting to e-commerce. Um, the goal in really is right now to retain the customers you do have. And so you need to think about where they are and, and reposition yourself accordingly. Um, coming up with new strategies uh, and, and reshaping 
your old strategies uh, for, you know, and looking at it customer segment by customer segment or customer by customer, you know, and really think about uh, new objectives and goals that you can set. Um, give yourself some some targets to hit uh, with these new uh, new strategies and uh, really start executing. Um, so if you are pivoting to delivery, then you'll want to start putting some metrics around, well, how many deliveries a week do we need over what amount of time to, to, to float and how can we grow that? And how, you know, what are we gonna, what is it gonna cost to invest in growing um, our delivery base or our online base? Um, so uh, I would encourage you to, to take the current situation as the baseline, um, not the historical one at this point. You can certainly use uh, your previous uh, business model uh, somewhat, but you really need to think about uh, the current situation and how you're gonna reposition given the circumstances um, and create a new marketing strategy that reflects that. Uh, and like I said, you may have to spend a little more, spend some money and bring in um, an intern, a freelancer, who can help you kind of work through what it is you should do to create um, alternative revenue streams and support your customers. Uh, you really want to be focused on, again, engaging and strengthening those relationships. Um, I, it's been advised that uh, you should be using COVID language in your uh, marketing communications with your customers uh, in the way you reposition your, your products and services, meaning that you don't just ignore the elephant in the room uh, when you are repositioning your, your, uh, your company uh, or your products. Um, obviously, your customers are going to want to know why you're, you're doing things differently. And also, just be aware of anything you do, what some of the knock-on effects might be and um, and keep track of that, whether it's um, suppliers, uh, changes in suppliers or or new marketing staff or, or whatever it is. And, and you wanna think about um, keeping track of the changes you're making and the impact. Um, this is just a quick example of how you might go about thinking about repositioning a little um, set of marketing goals. Uh, you know, you wanna, understand hopefully uh, what your customers currently think of your products and your brand. Um, you can, you know, you don't have a lot of money. You could bring in a marketing intern. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you figure that out and, you know, start putting some timeline, uh, time, a timeline on, on some of your actions and obviously understand um, the cost. So uh, understanding your current customer base, uh, deciding which, elements can be considered as a necessity. So what do you really need to, to focus on, on selling uh, uh, or offering right now? Um, again, you can bring in some outside help if you need to, to help you figure that out. Um, come up with new offers, such as the e-commerce uh, web shop and, and test it. Uh, you can set yourself a budget, you can set yourself revenue goals, you can say, I'm gonna do this for a month and see uh, what happens. Uh, but start start devising new offers, offer new packages, offer gift certificates for the fall, whatever it is, and start testing that uh, and start learning from that. Um, and again, uh, um, new marketing channels, uh, you're, you're gonna probably wanna go more digital and be more automated in your connections with your, your customers. Um, and then there's the website and foot traffic which is an example of a target you could have. You know, you wanna have so many visits to your website per month, or you, know, you wanna be selling many digital gift certificates uh, from your website per month, and um, that's about setting marketing targets. So again, just starting to put some teeth on um, the idea of repositioning your business. This is a very, very busy slide, and I won't go through it, but this is an example of what people are doing now. So, um, One's a plumbing business and one is a restaurant and they're, they are repositioning themselves. They, the plumbing, uh, up at the top, the, the plumbing uh, business is targeting uh, directly the customers with their communications rather than the, uh, the plumbers who are actually um, regular customers. They're going straight to the end consumer and saying, hey, update your home, right? Um, they're 
you know, a little humor. They, they are bragging that they carry bidets uh, because obviously toilet paper is a problem. So that's a new value proposition, uh, making people aware that, you know, you can use a bidet instead of worrying about toilet paper. Um, you know, obviously activity is changing in the way they interact. Um, you know, volume's very down in the store, one to two customers. They're being very clear about that. And they're talking about how they value their employees. Um, so they're, you know, they're all, they've thought this out and uh, maybe, you know, they didn't sit down and, and plan it out for hours, but um, clearly they're starting to reposition and who knows, you know, some of that might stick. Uh, in terms of La Playa Azul, everybody knows that restaurant, you know, you have our changes in hours. I'd be curious to know why those specific days and hours. Um, they're offering booze, which is smart. Uh, with their to-go, they're offering discounts. Um, again, when it comes to forecasting, you would want to understand, you'd want to start tracking, okay, I'm giving these discounts. How many people are taking us up on it and what's it costing me or what's it bringing me in? What's the trade-off there? Um, and, and then relationships at the bottom, um, the bottom right, uh, they say, thank you for your support. We'll get through this together. And again, it's just about connecting just that little bit with with people, um, I will remember uh, La Playa Azul Cafe um, if I decide to order food anytime soon um, because of that. Uh, so just make sure you're, as you reposition, you're monitoring and tracking what you're doing and how customers are reacting to those changes. It's gonna help inform uh, your business model and your forecast later on. Um, don't think of it as something temporary that you, you know, you're just doing for a while. And, and lastly, uh, redesign is really about thinking about the future uh, and are you gonna really pivot your business? Um, you know, what are the opportunities that COVID might present? Um, you know, I have here turn COVID uh, from short-term pain into long-term game. And it, right now it may not seem like that's possible, but um, I've seen it happen again after Hurricane Katrina. I've seen people uh, lose absolutely everything, their business, their houses and, and come back stronger than ever. It took time, but uh, you know they didn't give up. So you want to be thinking about what would I do differently if I started my business today in this environment? You know, what do I need to change? What, what can I take advantage of? Uh, and start reimagining uh, what and accepting what the new normal will be. Um, you know, we're not gonna, this isn't gonna go away overnight. And I think everybody knows that we might see a resurgence of, of uh, COVID again, and uh, consumers are probably gonna be gun shy for quite a while. So you're gonna wanna really reinvent your business to work in that type of environment. Um, and again, looking at your business model assumptions, uh, shedding any, any legacies that might be holding you back, such as I need to have uh, a table, a restaurant full of tables uh, to make my, uh, my financials work. You're gonna have to kind of dismiss that and, and rethink things and reinvent. Um, create, creating a new strategy, again, that aligns with the, the new normal um, is very important. You, you want to be, you know, you want to think forwardly, you want to be more predictive in your actions and proactive in how you're thinking about your business um, and try to get out of this kind of reactionary situation we're in right now. Um, and again, forecasting. To do this, you really need to you know, start creating and thinking about um, you know, two or three possible options for your business uh, given you know, two or three different future scenarios. And it doesn't have to be terribly complicated, but you should at least start uh, thinking about that and, and, and how you might move uh, to a new business model. Um, and, and generally speaking, you wanna make sure that you're, you're more agile in terms of how you manage your business, that you can maybe react more quickly um, to, to what's thrown at you and um, operationally and, and budget-wise and, and financially. You, know, you might consider uh, creating a disaster reserve uh, that, that's only for uh, reacting to a disaster um, and just being very disciplined about that, for example. So on a more positive note, I just want to remind you that um, disruption is not always a bad thing. 
Uh, we, you know, we've all heard about Spotify and Uber and these companies who disrupted entire industries and we are actually better off uh, mostly because of that. Um, so there is opportunity and disru disruption as hard as that might be to see right now. Um, and you really need to adopt a disruption mindset that COVID has come in and it's, it's really um, wreaking havoc on your industry and your business. And what are you going to do about it? Um, and, uh, you know, you have to start thinking about innovating and, and even, you know, total business transformation, even if it is um, a hotel or a restaurant, you know, that just brick and mortar, uh, lots of tables, that model, even though it's been around forever, uh, may not survive for a lot of people. So what are, what are you going to do about that? Um, you need to, to, to be prepared to, to change and, um, you know, start experimenting with different ideas. You know, not everything's on the table. Nothing is off the table in terms of, of what you can do. And that includes, um, sadly, closing down your business. If, if that's what your, your forecasting and your planning is, is, is showing, you certainly need to consider that as um, a possibility and plan for that. Um, and I don't say that lightly, um, but I just, you know, say that as a reminder, um, you know, and um, consumers and customers are going to have a host of new problems. Obviously people have lost their jobs. Um, they're working from home. Their kids are out of school and at home. Lots of new problems for people. You know, what can you do to, to help out? How can you um, use that to your advantage? Um, and another example I give here is your competitors are all in this with you. Keep an eye on them um, because uh, you know talk to them if you can. Uh, there might be opportunities to partner with a competitor or buy a competitor or do something completely different than your competitors um, that they're not thinking of. So, so pay attention to that. Um, so just to to kind of wrap it up here i put together you know 10 actions that you might consider uh you know in this kind of three-phase process to just kind of get going and i'm not going to read through them all uh, but i've kind of framed them in in terms of the different phases and uh right now i think everybody's getting their house in order and really um going through step one and you can start to, uh, to look at your business model and start changing your marketing and your sales and, and your products and services and repositioning those with your customers while keeping um, an eye out on the future and thinking about how you might redesign and reinvent different parts of your business, if not the entire business. Okay, so finally, um, I say for last that this concept of business continuity planning, again, something else that uh, will get you thinking about the future and really taking a, a hard look at what, what is going on right now. Um, I'm just gonna keep it pretty high level at this point. I don't know how many of you have heard of a black swan event, uh, but COVID is a black swan event. And I just wanna to highlight that, that, um, this is really something that is catastrophic. Uh, it, it is unpredictable. And um, you, if anything, uh, if you survive this, this crisis and your business survives, uh, you want to be ready for the next black swan event uh, because it will happen. And, um, you know, again, going back to Hurricane Katrina, everyone knows there will be another catastrophic hurricane at some point in Louisiana. Uh, whether they prepare for it or not is, is up to them. So that's what business um, continuity planning is all about. And I think a lot of people may have plans in place for disasters like earthquakes or fires, um, but maybe not really focused on a pandemic. So um, business continuity is uh, you know, is, is just what it sounds like. Uh, it's how do you get, you document how you're gonna get back into business um, in the event of a major disruption. Uh, and it, it can be very extensive if you want, covering policies and procedures uh, that your company and employees should follow in the face of different disasters. Um, and it basically covers every aspect of your business and puts in protocols and plans uh, for reacting to the disaster. Um, I 
would like to emphasize that there could be a 2.0 coming in the fall, maybe even beyond that. So it's really important to look at your business continuity planning, start thinking about uh, how you can get something in place that will help you react uh, to another future pandemic. Um, just some best practices. I won't read all of these, but I will highlight some. Uh, anything you read about business continuity uh, tells you to put the health and well-being of your people first. And that includes employees and customers. And you see that happening all over right now with um, employee protection, but you also see that not happening, especially in the beginning where there was a lack of protective equipment, even in the hospitals. So not great um, pandemic continuity planning. Uh, initially, and recently um, we saw uh, the example of Jersey Mike's in LAX airport. Um, there was a video that went viral. Um, their employees were not wearing masks. They were not wearing gloves. And, um, you know, they're going to suffer uh, because of that now. So um, always, always start with people when you're planning the business continuity and, and, and how you're going to manage the people issue. Um, again, like I said before, uh, you want to, to set aside a, a specific team to think about uh, the crisis. So, you know, maybe you're going to be focused on, um, on carrying on business and you, you need a team or a person that can really think through um, the crisis response for you. Uh, and, but somebody should lead it. You should, you should uh, always make sure you have someone identified to lead your crisis response. Um, communication is very important. Again, communicate, over communicate. You know, it's really hard right now with everyone indoors, and I'm sure even business owners are are maybe not terribly motivated to communicate. But it's critical, especially to um, reinstill consumer confidence after a disaster. So really, be thinking about how you're going to up your communications um, in the event of a disaster, and put in place protocols and even um, even have an email campaign ready to go. Um, and so you can just hit send. Uh, if you do have business continuity plans in place already, uh, if they were created a couple years ago, you definitely want to go back and make sure that they addressed um, the current situation. Um, in terms of what you focus on in business continuity, obviously the things in your business, the functions that make money, so if you, you're short on time, uh, focus on, you know, putting calls in place that are going to keep that going. Like I said, something as simple as uh, having an email campaign ready to go so that your customers uh, know that you haven't disappeared. Um, and then, you know, you're going to want to do your forecasting. So. Uh, you're going to want to look at what the business impact of any crisis will be, especially financially, and um, look at where the gaps are in terms of uh, what you're doing now and what you need to be doing to survive uh, a, a, a downturn due to a disaster. Um, and, and, and then you're going to put together, based on all of that, a plan of action. Um, and, and literally spelling out um, what you're going to do uh, to reduce the risk that you've identified in the process of putting this business continuity plan together. Um, so you really need to plan for um, a completely new normal and do the best you can to anticipate uh, what that might be and what uh, measures you can put in place uh, to be proactive instead of reactive to to uh, uh, a disaster. And, and just as by way of example, um, cleanliness. So that's sanitation is a big uh, theme right now. And as I mentioned, if you're a hotel, a restaurant, a grocery store, just about any business right now, from a consumer or customer perspective, uh, you wanna know it's clean and sanitized. And uh, a lot of businesses are not communicating uh, enough for me personally uh, what clean is and, and giving the reassurance that um, my takeaway food is not contaminated. Uh, so why not put that in your business continuity planning right now? So if there's a pandemic or anything that um, relates to sanitation, uh, you know, define what clean is. 
to your employees, your customers, your public, your the public at large. Uh, what is your process? What are your checks and proof? How you know in a hotel? How are you going to uh, make sure all the surfaces are clean? Um, how do you avoid the waste of cleaning products? Uh, you know we've run out of uh, hand sanitizer and sanitizer wipes, and you know how are you going to deal with that? Uh, are you going to stockpile? cleaning products in anticipation of another event like this. And, um, you know, I have, take photos, have a page communication ready to go. Uh, we're open and we're clean. Look at the pictures of our employees and masks, you know, look at our cleaning products. This is our process for cleaning every day. So even when grocery stores are saying, oh, we sanitize every day, um, you know, it's kind of vague. What do you mean you sanitize? Like what exactly are you doing? So I'm kind of harping on this. I think it's a real example in the current situation of where um, businesses could be planning a little better for, uh, for the whole sanitation issue. So we're coming to the end here. And um, just to kind of wrap up, I had a, a, a few thoughts. So uh, obviously nobody has answers to the future and um, a lot of economists, a lot of people, uh, experts are making forecasts, but at the same time admitting that they really don't know. So um, coming out of uh, the right sizing uh, phase of things, uh, we need to accept that we need to start to forecast what is a very unpredictable future. And um, the best you can do is is really try to be proactive and and uh, are taking in the information and gaining some foresight so that you can start to take control and get ahead of what's happening instead of reacting to it. Um, so you're continuously working to gather information like I showed in the beginning of the presentation, the local economic indicators, consumer confidence, um, and start looking at where your business is at risk and what the impact might be. Um, and just try to make the best and decisions you today with the information you have and keep an eye on the future and be predictive and proactive in, in how you're thinking and get comfortable with the current situation um, and having to reevaluate things every week, every month, every three months uh, because we, we may be in this situation for quite a while. So now's the time to start thinking about how you can be flexible and agile and how you can um, continuously reevaluate uh, your business in light of all these uncertainties. And hopefully that'll start giving you a level of confidence and control um, that'll replace some of the fear and uncertainty that you're certainly feeling right now. Um, knowledge is power um, and there's, there's power in action. So uh, be thoughtful about the action you're taking, but definitely start thinking about how you can take control. Um, I thank you very much for your time. I wish you the, the best of luck in forecasting and planning for a profitable future. Thank you.